Hello everyone, Dom here. Thanks for tuning in to my geeky book launch stream. Uh, it's mad to think I've been working on this for like the past two years now. Um, I started this writing this book all through World of Warcraft. Uh, I, I started playing it in a very geeky way, which is through role playing, where you actually I know it's geeky. You walk around with your character and you speak as if the character's speaking. Uh, and I made some good friends uh, doing that. And uh, someone asked me a while back, what's your character's backstory? And I didn't really have one at the time. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that. I was on holiday a couple of years ago uh, for the summer in Guernsey. And I uh, just started writing it. I got to about 10,000 words. And then I kept writing it and I kept writing it. And uh, I ended up with a book 120,000 words later. I hope that doesn't put you off the amount of words. Uh, it's, it's not too bad, uh, actually. Um, and, uh, and here I am. And I thought, do you know what? We're in lockdown and everything. Why not do a, uh, a launch stream? Just it'll be fun. You know, I've got lots of friends and family on watching this. So thank you for taking your Friday night out to, to sit down with me and uh, have a geeky session. Um, uh, Spatch, I've seen there. Thanks for tuning. Is Dom publishing a book? Another of the signs is the is the end nigh. Yes, the end is nigh. Um, yeah, great. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm gonna I'll run through the the structure uh, just quickly of, of of the stream to see what you're sort of getting yourselves into. I'm gonna try and keep this stream to roughly an hour so it doesn't go on too long, uh, so you can have uh, more of your evening to do. Uh, other things. Uh, Spatch says his word limit is 119,999. Yeah, nice. Okay, Spatch, you won't be able to. Well, you've already read it, so you, you, the, you know, Spatch here in the chat, uh, he helped proofread this book, um, which I'll come on to a bit later. Um, but yeah, just going into the uh, structure, then, guys. So I'm going to start off with a book blurb, and then I'm going to try and do this giveaway. I've looked into. Uh, how you can do a giveaway on stream and I'm hoping that I've got it all set up. You'll see here I've got some physical copies of the book. This is a uh, really limited edition because it's fan fiction I can't sell these things so I've made 20 of them. I've given a couple out to family already and I'm going to give away five on stream tonight. If you want them signed, if you want to be uh, geeky I'm happy to sign them uh, for you. So I'll start that uh, soon, the giveaway. Then I've got a trailer reveal. So I've made a little, well I've had some people help me make a trailer which I'm going to put on socials uh, and announce the book and get it out there to the Warcraft community because there's a lot of people that still don't know that this is a thing uh, you know and there's a lot of other fan fiction books out there actually it's quite competitive as well so uh, I'm going to do that I'm going to run through some thank yous and then I'll get, get on to the book reading and then uh, you might be sick of hearing from me and my monotone voice my monotonous voice so I'm going to jump into some reviews there as well. I've got a couple of early reader reviews. And then I'll go into q and A. Q &A. So you can ask me anything there. You can ask me about the book, anything else, what I'm up to with work or anything else, whatever tickles your fancy. And I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, silly questions welcome, of course. I, I might do another reading, probably not, because I did a quick run through yesterday and the book reading, I was reading it quite slowly. So I don't want to uh, drag on for too long but we'll, we'll gauge if, if people in the chat want another reading I'll, I'll maybe give you another one uh, and then I'll pick the giveaway winners and uh, end the stream so uh, yeah I hope that's all that's all good uh, and uh, yeah I can see you in the chat as well on stream which is good so you know feel free to ask questions as we go I put I might not be able to answer them as we go I might save them and then answer them at the end but um I'll start with the book blur because if you don't know about the book, uh, it will give you a bit of an insight into the story. So it's called Turning Red, The Chronicles of Phoenix Bloodheart. That's my character up there. I had that picture commissioned uh, a while back and it's been in here in my log cabin uh, sitting there. No one knows much about it. Um, so I'm implying there might be more books in this series. It's fan fiction. I want to do other books as well. I want to do other original things. I've got a sci-fi idea that I'd like to write uh, which I can actually sell as well uh, if if I own everything you know I mean this book I have it's set in the Warcraft universe which those of you who don't know World of Warcraft the Warcraft series is a popular series of video games or PC games and um, but all the characters in it are kind of my creation so although it is fan fiction it kind of is kind of isn't because I'm not writing about 
other characters. You know, if you write about Harry Potter fan fiction, I'm not writing about Harry doing stuff. I'm writing about these characters that I've devised myself. So I'll, I'll go straight into the uh, uh, Rise of a Phoenix, uh, the the book blurb. Yeah, Rob said, is that all the blood he spilled in a Raffi Basin, if you're a Whale fan? Yes, I played a lot at uni, and I know there's a few of my old, uh, uh, very close uni friends watching this. There was that time I, I was around their house, and uh, I was playing World of Warcraft multiplayer, and I left a pan on in the uh, kitchen, and uh, Greg, one of my mates, came running in saying, Dom, what the hell's going on? There's smoke in the kitchen. Have you left something on? I was like, oh, shit. I had to run and uh, put it off, put it out and everything. So that's how addictive uh, the game was. Um I'm there with Resistance. I don't know what that username is, but they've said Ex exciting stuff, Dom. Sorry, Excel playing, so can't stay long. We wanted to come and support. Thank you. Uh, that might be Sue. Uh, thanks, Sue. Yeah, it's this stream is clashing with a big uh, UK League of Legends team uh, playing, so apologies for that. And there's 30 people watching this. I thought I'd be lucky if I had five or six, so thank you. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, I'll read the blurb. Rise of a Phoenix. Born in the enchanted elven kingdom of Kel'Thalas, Phoenix is unlike other high elves. She has never had an affinity for magic. Raised by a prostitute, she quickly grows disillusioned by her mother's profession and drug use, making her an anxious, quiet child. For her life is grey and going nowhere. But when Phoenix inadvertently commits a crime and her mother goes missing, fate threatens to turn her life into a living nightmare. Homeless and alone, Phoenix gets caught up in a perilous gang war and is forced to adapt in order to survive. She takes a side, but is it the right one? Can her allies be trusted if they are keeping secrets from her? Can they turn this flawed, red-headed rogue into a formidable sword fighter and find her mother? Aside from the many trials that she will face on her journey, Phoenix must also do battle with the most dangerous and unstable entity she knows, her mind. I hope that's got you intrigued. If it hasn't, I'm sorry. If it has, I'm glad. Um, yes, that's good. There's people. I'm glad this, this chat is active as well, guys. Please feel free to talk amongst yourselves silly stories about me. Uh, take the mick. Uh, do what you like uh, as we go through this. So I've done the blurb. I'm going to try and start the giveaway now, okay? So bear with me, guys, while I'm doing this. Let's go back to camera view. I am going to open up Streamlabs, which is a thing that lets me manage this stream. And they've got a giveaway in here. And I should have set it up nicely to uh, allow you to re enter really easily by typing a word into the chat. So fingers crossed that this works. And we'll see what happens. OK, so I've started the giveaway. It says your giveaway has started. Uh, there's a stream delay. I've got my laptop in front here, so we'll see. Yeah, there we go. A raffle started for viewers. Type exclam exclamation mark red to enter. So Origami Becca, that's uh, hi Becca. You're the first to enter, and I can see um, on the system here people are entering. So I've got five people entered so far. Becca, Lucy, AM. Hi Lucy. Thank you for. Uh, tuning in. Lucy is an author herself. Uh, Lucy, tell the chat about uh, what you're doing as well. Um, you've just had a, a publishing deal, which is fantastic. Uh, congratulations. That is that is brilliant. That's very inspiring. Um, Greg, Turpin, Tully, Craig, Adam Erskine, Spatch, Sally, Too Much Apple Pie, whoever that is, uh, and uh, Erkin86. Is that Adam Erskine, have you got two accounts there? Enter in twice. That's naughty. If if you are uh, infected, crucifix. Ah, oh, two of my old uh, World of Warcraft guildmates. Thank you very much for tuning in. The way it is, who's one of our early readers. Thank you for reading the book as well. So we've got thirteen people signing up to that. So you can enter that as as we go throughout the stream. Just hit exclamation mark red. I think you can just enter once. Um, Gingered, hey Dom. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Jack, uh, I appreciate it because there's a League of Legends match going on at the moment. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Mrs. Erskine is Beth. I'll let you off. I'll let you off. You're, you're two people. I hope you're doing well after getting married last year. Okay. Uh, lost the video audio. Has anyone else lost uh, lost it? 
Or is that just Rob? I'm hoping we haven't lost it. Nope, all good. I, it, Rob, you might want to refresh, mate. Close Twitch down and, and try it again. Right, so we've got the giveaway going. Uh, now I've got, just before I get into the book reading, I will get on there uh, really soon. Um, I'm going to do the trailer reveal for you. This is the first time this has been shown off. I've, I've had this for ages. Uh, thanks to Tom for helping with this. So I'm going to show this off. Uh, Lucy said she, she's got a fantasy book coming out in 2022. So a while off yet. And her twi Twitter is at Lucy A. McLaren, if you want to stay tuned. So please do. I will say the writing community has been really, really nice. It's one of the nicest communities I've, I've been involved with from, from the top you know megastar authors down to the the newbies like me uh, I, i'm not a newbie writer but i'm a newbie creative writer you know i haven't written a book before it's the first time i've done it so um and there are some shortcomings i know i know people be saying stop talking yourself down dom you've just written a book but uh i'm a bit of a perfectionist there's, there's things to improve next time okay matt porter thank you for tuning in matt uh from my league of legends clash team and a fellow journalist fantastic uh, i'm going to jump into the trailer now guys um so this is going to be shown on socials but i wanted to you know thank say thank you for you guys tuning in and show it off here first um so for this trailer i'll tell you what i'll just play it first and i'll shut up i'll play it and uh so here we go Okay, cool. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I'm going to plaster that on Reddit and Twitter, Facebook. I know it's a vertical video, but um, there's not much you can do with a, with a, um, a portrait you've had commissioned that is in vertical uh, format, you know. So, uh, yeah, so that would be good. Thank you to Nariel, who drew that amazing picture. I had that commissioned, uh, I think it was like a couple of years ago now. Uh, Tom Stratford, my good friend, my old uni pal Tom, animated that and... Uh, Fantastic, uh, Tom. Thank you for doing that. And shout out to Leonardo Zorzi, uh, a, a composer I found on Fiverr.com. Uh, it didn't cost a, a Fiverr to make that music, but I love it. Uh, that's original music. That's the character Phoenix Bloodheart's theme tune now, and I can do w what I like with that, basically. So that's that's lovely. I'm, gl I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Tully saying, Adam Turpin is watching this naked. I don't want to know that. Thank you very much, Tully. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, so I think we'll jump into the book uh, reading now, guys. Oh, first, sorry, I've got a list of thank yous. I, I thanked a few people there. I just want to thank a few others before I get into the book reading and I'll jump straight in. So I mentioned those three. Uh, shout out to James Batchelor. I've mentioned him already on the street uh, on the stream. That's Spatch UK. Uh, James, I'm sorry you had to work with me and sit next to me and put up with me. Uh, for years and car sharing on the way to work and back. I'm an annoying git, uh, but it was good times, mate. It was good times, and thank you for proofing the entire book. You really helped me sort a lot of things out, especially character perspectives. I didn't even know what that was before I uh, started writing, so uh, that helped me a lot in in terms of tidying the book up. Uh, and shout out to other early feedback I got from Alpha readers, Roy Hemingway, Louise Walgren, and at the way it is 35 on Twitter, you really helped um, me change a few bits uh, around in the book. And there's a few other thank yous there for some of the fonts and things like that. Some of the guilds, the great guilds I've been in uh, over mm -hmm. the years uh, in World of Warcraft. 
And a shout out to the games makers, of course, Blizzard Entertainment. My book has nothing to do with them. It's non-commercial. I'm not making a penny from it. So uh, keep your lawyers at bay, please, uh, Blizzard. Um, and a shout out to FeslianStudios.com for the music at the start of this stream as well. And to Michelle Anderstar at Ingram Spark, who inspired me to do this launch stream. Um, so, fantastic. I'm going to try and slow my pace of jittery talking down a bit now as I give you this uh, book reading. So I'm going to switch back to my camera. Okay. <laughs> Spatch says, I'm sorry too, Dom. No, you were good, mate. Yeah, you, your Spatch rage on the roads, uh, I'll never forget. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't too bad. Okay, so for this book reading then, guys, I'm not going to read straight from the start. And I'll explain why. I'm going to jump into chapter four. <clears throat> the prologue is set at a, a slightly different time period to at, like at the start of where the story begins. So um, you don't sort of need to know the prologue anyway. The first three chapters cover Phoenix's early life, which is when she's sort of like five, six years old. So there's a few bits there that add flavour and context to what comes later in the book. Um, but for this reading, I've picked chapter four because it's one of the main sort of plot points. It's one of the main, um, it's like a hook into the book. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Spatch and Lucy will be able to tell you what the name of this thing is as uh, more experienced authors than me. Uh, there's a word for it. There's a name for it. It's the main part of the book that uh, sort of gets you hooked. It's the main sort of piece of plot. You know what I mean. I'm going to stop. Inciting incident. That's it, Lucy. That's it. It's an inciting incident, which you don't need to know. It's an author thing. But um, I'm going to read the chapter that has the inciting incident. And a bit of context. So Phoenix, she grows up in an inn. Uh, her mum is a prostitute there. It's sort of like half in, half brothel type thing. She doesn't like it. She's grown disillusioned from it. At this point in the book, she's 15 years old. And basically she wants out. She's had enough, um, you know... She doesn't get along with her mum. Her life's going nowhere. She wants to get a new life for herself, basically. Um, yeah, so we're at that point. So here I go. Let me know if I'm talking too fast or too slowly or too uh, stupidly or whatever. But I hope it's okay. I'll do my best. Okay, so chapter four, A Fire Inside. Phoenix has been planning this day for months, having spent so much time just thinking about what to write. Now it's here, she's surprised that she doesn't feel nervous. Phoenix would never be able to say these words aloud, but as she writes, she continues to bottle some of her feelings and holds back the tears while doing so. She writes, Mother, I can't do this anymore. The blood thistle, the prostitution, the questions you've left unanswered. Why do we have to be stuck here? Who is my father? Do you even love me? Our life here is dysfunctional and I've had enough, I'm leaving. Maybe I'll return one day to show you there is life outside of this inn. Until then, please don't come after me. Phoenix. Later that evening, Phoenix says goodbye to the inn's bouncer, Solari. Not literally. Let's see if I can lean this here, move this keyboard out of the way one second. Uh, later that evening, Phoenix says goodbye to the inn's bouncer, Solari. Not literally because she wants to leave without causing a fuss, but by telling him he's a good bouncer instead. The ageing battle mage is taken aback by the sudden compliment and is left blinking and bewildered as Phoenix scoots off to her room. She packs her things, some clothes, food, water, gold and basic tools including a pocket knife and a rope, into a humble bag. And that evening she falls asleep sooner than usual, dozing through a mild commotion in the hall outside of her room. The following morning she wakes up in the early hours while everyone else is still asleep. It's just past 5am and the world is still and dark. Phoenix wraps a grey cloak around her shirt and leaves the four walls of her minuscule room for the final time. She opens the door to Crim's room and tiptoes past the old, sleeping, snoring goblin and into the hallway beyond. The skinny teenage elf waits outside her mother's room for a long moment. She brings the envelope to her mouth and thinks about kissing it. But for what? Luck? Love? She decides against this and slides it hastily underneath the door instead. Phoenix turns to leave but hesitates. She thinks about scrapping the whole idea and staying at the inn. Her mind dips to and fro like a ship sailing through choppy waters. 
The thought of staying is eventually brushed aside, but part of her wants to say goodbye to her mother properly. She deserves that, doesn't she? Phoenix reaches a middle ground and decides to take one last look at her mother while she sleeps. Phoenix slowly opens the door to her mother's room and shuffles inside almost silently, stepping over her own letter. She turns her nose up and holds her breath. The room stinks of blood thistle, the substance her mother had grown addicted to. She moves towards her mother's bed and suddenly comes to a stop. The room is empty and her mother is gone. Phoenix checks the clock. It's too late for her to still be working. Something is wrong. She scurries back to Krim's room and knocks on the door, quickly questioning why on Azeroth she's doing so and decides to just walk in and wake the goblin up instead. She, wo- she rocks the frail goblin a little too vigorously and he awakes, startled. What? What is... Krim groans. My mother is not in her room. Where is she? Phoenix whispers. Krim's half sigh, half yawn and look of guilt tells Phoenix he knows something. I had to kick her out. What? Why? Phoenix raises her voice slightly. She had no idea why she was whispering anyway. I'm sorry, the the blood thistle abuse was a problem. People were talking about her and I can't house a substance like that in a place like this. She was attracting the wrong crowd. It's nothing personal, it's just bad for business. So you kicked her out without letting me know, after all we've done for you in this inn. Phoenix feels a pang of rage but keeps in line. I was going to tell you in the morning you were sleeping, Krim slurs in his half-asleep state. She was okay with it and I didn't force her to leave right away. Your mother wanted you to know she'll be back soon to talk to you. Phoenix doesn't notice his nervousness. Did she say when, she asks. Krim shakes his head sadly. Of course this means there's a vacancy, he continues. People are talking, you know, you you look like your mother and I'm getting more requests for, so maybe in the future you could... Don't you dare finish that sentence, she says. You keep your filthy money. Phoenix, surprised by her confidence, lets the rage bubble more this time, but turns her head away in anger as she storms out of the room and the inn for good. Krim calls out for her, but she doesn't turn back. As Phoenix opens the homely oak front door of the inn, a a wave of feelings rush over her. Sadness for her mother's situation, anger over how things turned out, and dare she think it, excitement for what may lie ahead. Disappointment in herself and her in her pitiful life. She closes the door and feels her eyes welling up. She frowns, fighting back the tears, and leans back against the bricks of the inn wall, looking up at the purple sky with a grimace. After taking a moment to regain her composure, Phoenix wipes away a tear and breathes deeply, the crisp early morning air filling her lungs. She can feel the warmth of the sun well, and feeling a smidgen of calm, looks around Murder Row. The buildings and cobbled streets are encased by a dim hue, but not quite shadow, as the first signs of dawn emerge. To her left is the entrance to an alley. On her right there is a long concrete path leading out towards the central areas of Silvermoon. The city is sleeping, except for the solitary drunk with his back to the wall by a nearby alley, that is. Upon spotting the young elf, he mutters something inaudible at her. She realises her crime may have woken him up and feels a mild pang of guilt. You and me are alike now, she thinks to herself, homeless and probably going nowhere. She looks to her right and takes her first step to leave. The door to the inn creaks open behind her. Wait, Fee, Krim says wearily, I haven't told you the truth. Phoenix looks back at the little goblin, shocked. Her mouth opens as she thinks of something to say, but he is the first to talk. I didn't fire your mother, Krim continues, pausing to lock eye contact with her. She was taken. Phoenix stares at Krim in disbelief, her mouth widening. What? Who? She stutters. I... He sighs and throws his hands above his head, not knowing where to start. They left this note, he says, handing it to her while avoiding eye contact. Phoenix takes it, stunned. Your mum didn't want you to know. She didn't want to scare you, Krim says, but you're not a little girl anymore and you deserve to know. I'm sorry, Phoenix, I really am. Please don't do anything stupid. Come back inside, won't you? Phoenix takes a deep breath as she grips the note tightly, not wanting to unfold it or discover what lies within. Deep down, but she knows she must. She opens a folded scrap of paper slowly, reading each word carefully. It reads... Amelia can no longer afford to pay for our goods, so she's now in our property until the debt is paid. Do not speak of this or your business will suffer. In the meantime, we suggest you find a new whore for your establishment. A small feather has been drawn and smudged in the bottom corner of the note. 
Phoenix softly scrunches the paper and looks up at Krim as her world crumbles around her, almost literally. She wants to cry, to scream, to panic all at once. The powerful feelings that have been buried for years rush to the surface and this time cannot be contained by Phoenix's mind. All noise evaporates. The sound of the gentle breeze brushing the leaves of a nearby tree. The creak of the door and Krim's concerned voice it is all replaced by silence followed by the pounding of Phoenix's heart as it thunders rapidly inside her chest. She's trying desperately to focus on Krim, to answer him, but all she can see is the old goblin silently mouthing something to her as if in slow motion. Phoenix attempts to turn her head, but everything around her blurs, like she's travelling at a hundred miles an hour yet somehow remaining stationary. Krim's head blends with the swirling lines into the door, with the in wall, with the floor. The lights go out. The end. That's it. That's it. Uh, Phoenix life is over. That's it. Cheers for tuning in, guys. No. Uh, pause there. You know, you get those little squiggly lines in a book um, that tell you there's a break. That's happened. Okay. Phoenix regains consciousness. The feeling of wind rushing in her ears, slowly replaced by hideous screaming as she comes round. She turns to the noise of the shrieking and sees the homeless elf recoiling away from her in horror, tripping over an empty bottle onto the ground. Get away from me, please, he begs, glancing up at Phoenix and the floor beside her. She looks down to see uh, Krim's lifeless body in a pool of blood and his face, or what's left of it, smashed into an unnatural mess. There is a hollow where his left eye and the bridge of his nose should be, bloody scratch marks on his forehead and cheeks, and most of his teeth are missing. His neck is purple and the expression on his emo motionless, utterly disfigured face is one of horror. Thick bloodstains are marked on the door of the inn and parts of the wall beside her. Phoenix wretches and vomits onto the floor, part of her sick splashing onto Krim's boots. She turns away from the body in disbelief, leans over and spits, out of breath. As she leans her palms on her, her knees, she notices both of her hands and the sleeves of her grey shirt are stained with blood. She starts to shake with fear. Help! Somebody guards! the drunk shouts and Phoenix hears footsteps emerging from the nearby alley. She looks up at the cowering elf and back down at the blood on her trembling hands. She thinks for two seconds and runs. She sprints along the long tar tarmac path to leave Murder Row as quickly as possible, her slim frame swiftly cutting through the air, the satchel bouncing awkwardly on her back, her leather boots patting softly with urgency on the cobbled street. Before she reaches the grey wall at the end of the path, which forks left and right, three forks rush into her mind all at once. First, she ponders which way to turn, left towards Royal Exchange, the quicker way out of the city, or right towards the bazaar, the longer but potentially safer option with crowds of shoppers and traders to hide amongst, although scrap that, they won't be there this early. Second, how long will it be before other guards identify her? Third, did she really just kill someone? Not just anyone, the person who provided a home for her whole life, the only thing she'd ever had that could come close to a father figure. The third thought makes her feel sick again. It lingers in her mind, causing Phoenix to glance over her shoulder while running at full pelt. Krim's lifeless body lies in the centre of her line of vision. Phoenix feels a mix of fear, panic and disgust all rolled into a ball of anxiety. She spots the tramps speaking to a fully armoured royal guard who turns towards Phoenix. Her eyes widen. Her, his ornate silver armour is dull with no morning sun to catch its edges and glint. What if he's a battle mage? He could cast a spell towards her and harm or restrain her in seconds. She pushes the fort aside, quickly swivels her head forwards again and continues running forwards. She gasps. Phoenix suddenly crashes into someone. She knocks over an oncoming male elf who is adorned in a majestic set of blue robes, sending his large, gnarled wooden staff ricocheting noisily onto the floor and her bag flying to the right, choosing the path for her. He shrieks in shock and anger as he spills over backwards onto his backside, while Phoenix, unable to break her momentum, tumbles on top of him as they clatter to the floor. Shit, she cries out, panicked by the seconds wasted and her displaced bag. Imbecile, he grumbles loudly, swatting her away, but she's already pushed him, herself off him, leaving a smear of goblin's blood on his silk robes, which he hasn't yet noticed. Watch where you're going. Phoenix ignores him and instinctively sprints towards the bazaar. She picks up her satchel on the way, throwing its strap around her left shoulder and tightly under her right arm as she runs along the narrow path, sandwiched by several small buildings and closed shops. 
This time Phoenix doesn't take a half second to look back at the guard. She thinks she hears him shout something, but she's in full flight now and blocks the noise out. Phoenix's body aches like never before. Not because she's never run as fast in all her life, and not from the impact of bumping into the passerby, but from something else. Her slim torso feels like it has been drained of energy as if she's been working out all morning, or crashing after a sugar high. Uh, Phoenix bl blinks for a second as she attempts to absorb whatever she can from the sunwell. Nothing happens, she still feels lethargic but forces herself to continue, hoping the adrenaline coursing through her veins will see her through. The wind rushing in her long ears quietens as the path suddenly opens up and she emerges into the bazaar's main circular plaza, turning left to face the large gaping sp space between her and the street leading to the inner elf gate and Silver Moon's exit. Panic crashes over her like a wave, stopping her in her tracks momentarily as she breathes wildly and darts her eyes all around the plaza. There are merchants setting up their stalls and carts as the first trickle of, trickle of shoppers enters the streets but there is still hardly anyone there here. It's too early for crowds. Blending in and losing any trailing guards that way is not an option. She hears desperate footsteps and clanking armour in the alley behind her and instantly resorts to plan B. Phoenix starts running again, veering slightly to the left to avoid making a scene in the middle of the large circular plaza. She knows she must pass through the inner elf gate before word reaches it if she's to evade capture. Phoenix digs deep for that extra something and runs a little faster. This is not how things were supposed to be. She had planned on taking her time to walk out of Silvermoon one last time and admire the world around her, to drink in the magical aura and early morning stillness of her home city, enshrouded in permanent springtime by the sunwell. She wanted to do this to ease her doubts and forget the past. Instead, she's running like a headless chicken fighting for survival. Regardless, Silvermoon is beautiful. The beige buildings stand tall, decorated in traditional elven style with splashes of blue, red, green and gold. It demands the attention of every elf, every visitor, every inhabitant present, the occasional luscious green or red leaf tree adding to its beauty. <clears throat> but Phoenix cannot register any of it properly as she whizzes through the ancient city alone at this hour without her mother for the very first time. As she passes the stall, she catches the eye of a merchant glancing towards her with puzzled curiosity. He soon spots the guard running after her, as do a few other traders. Phoenix is already halfway across the plaza when the guard emerges from the alley. She left some ten seconds ago. Stop her, he yells, the deep voice echoing across the plaza. Phoenix suddenly comes over giddy and slows ever so slightly to retain focus, her boots staggering across the cobbled ground. She, cu she passes a couple of patrolling guards, previously hidden by a large marquee on her right. She notices them in her peripheral vision but keeps her distorted focus dead ahead. The pair of guards look at each other and back at Phoenix. This propels her to keep up the pace, fighting against her body's urge to stop and rest. She, sh she sh shakes it off and continues. Her! A screaming echo comes from the other end of the plaza. plaza. By the sunwell, stop that girl! The two guards give chase, joining the third a few seconds ahead of him, but Phoenix has already reached the street at the end of the plaza and is now bursting with all her strength towards the inner elf gate. Her light, slim frame gives her an advantage over the heavily armoured guards with their long shields and double-bladed swords. Flashes of blue, gold and white blur in front of her as she passes tall, ornate buildings either side of the street, which is paved with beautiful blue stones. There's the odd person here and there going for an early morning walk, their eyes bulging at Phoenix as she whizzes past, but at this hour there's hardly anyone else around. Phoenix's breathing is fast and erratic. She doesn't have time to admire some of the golden statues of elven legend, including uh, Dathurimar Sunstrider, who founded the Kingdom of Kelphalas some 7,000 years ago. He fearlessly led his people across the seas through harsh blizzards in the mountains and fought off savage Amani trolls to make their home here. Now his statue merely watches as an unwitting murderer flees his people. Phoenix notices the statue and briefly wonders if she too will lead an interesting life or if she's destined to rot in prison for a crime she didn't want to commit or doesn't even remember doing. Her head feels cloudy and she instead tries to concentrate on leaving Silvermoon City behind her. Her body is burning with effort, crying out for her to stop, but her mind wills her to keep going. At the end of the street there's a clearing, the buildings replaced by bushes and grass, as the city ends and Eversong Forest begins. 
She can hear distant sounds, uh, distant shouts from the guards behind her, but doesn't hesitate as her boots move from the tap of the concrete to the silent muffle on grass. Phoenix turns right and hesitates. The enormous inner elf gate dawns in front of her, defiant and bold, the only thing standing between her and freedom. Fear bubbles within her. The gate opens at sunrise every morning around 6am for traders and customers to bring their coin into the city. But Silvermoon is still in that transition between night and morning. The gate is closed tight. The only ones inside the city right now are those who live there or those who passed through the gate yesterday. She's trapped. The elf gate consists of two gargantuan wooden doors, each inlaid with gold and displaying a striking ornate pattern which flows and curves as one when both doors are shut as they are now. Each thick door is about 25 metres long and 20 metres tall, creating a huge 50 metre wall, a barrier to protect Silvermoon from the outside. A flicker of blue magic beams across the elf gate, which is sandwiched by two circular stone guard towers and sheer, almost unscalable hilltops. Battlements run atop the length of the gate, connecting the twin towers, with some of Silvermoon's finest guards and archers stationed and ready upon them. Two special gatekeepers are positioned at the centre of the battlements, responsible for any guard shift changes and most importantly open and closing uh, the gate via two huge stone winches encrusted with magical gems, uh, runestones. The guards here speak only in Thalassian, the high elven tongue, and expect travellers to speak it too should they wish to trade in the city. Phoenix, knowing she probably has a half a minute maximum before the other guards catch up with her, runs straight towards the centre of the huge inner elf gate. Anaria Shalar! Uh, shouts one of the elves down at her from atop the commanding elf gate. Speak your business. Anara la Belore! By the light of the sun, Phoenix yells between her breaths, her heart tearing through her chest like a drum. A breeze catches her hair as she desperately tries to catch her breath. Belore, Ara now, Belore, Ara now. The sun rises, the sun rises, she repeats desperately but gets no response. One gatekeeper says to the other, low and impossible for Phoenix to hear, She's eager, Andreas, it's not daybreak yet. Phoenix cries up at the guards again, her voice breaking and echoing across the large open space. A new Belore Delana, the eternal sun guards us. Back atop the high battlements, the second guard responds to the first. Bah, it's only a little girl, Daniel, just ignore her. The gatekeeper's words trail off as in that very moment the first ray of sunlight pokes above the horizon, catching Phoenix's ginger hair and gleaming mildly off the gold pattern of the inner elf gate. Phoenix is spending every valuable second to take as many breaths as she can, but the shining glint from one of the guard's helmets atop the elf gate takes her breath away. Huh, the first guard states, watching the first light of dawn break over the horizon. Would you look at that? Guess she's right. Well, let's open it. Al Diel Shalar, the second guard yells down towards Phoenix, safe travels. Hope flutters in her heart as she sprints towards the two towering doors, smiling wide, widely. Al Diel Shalar, she shouts in return with ecstasy and disbelief. Al Diel Shalar, safe travels. The two gatekeepers atop the battlements start to turn their respective winches, and one of them shakes his head in response to the girl's peculiar enthusiasm. They do not see the three guards emerging from the edge of the city towards the grass and the enormous gate. Phoenix arrives at the base of the gate, pressing her hands on it as if this will somehow force it open quicker. She shuts her eyes and thinks about what may happen if she's caught, her heavy breaths seeping into the old wood. After what seems like an eternity, but it's probably only a few seconds, Phoenix feels the large door twinge as it starts to move. She looks over her shoulder and spots the three guards shouting at the top of their voices, running towards her and waving at the guards in the battlements to close the gate. Tell you new men, no kill do I. Death to those who oppose the high elves, one of the guards shouts up at the gatekeepers. Wait, the first gatekeeper says to the other. Andreas, what's that? Huh? He says in surprise, both gatekeepers moving away from the winches and looking below to see the guards waving at them to close the elf gate. They spin back towards the winches and turn them in the opposite direction fast in a bid to close the gate, but it's too late. Phoenix has already slivered through the narrowest of gaps between the two mammoth doors and is now sprinting down the hill into the thick shrubbery of Eversong Forest. There's confusion as the gatekeepers atop the wall and the guards below them shout out at one another, the gatekeepers trying to make sense of the situation and the archer generals in the two towers beside 
unable to understand what is happening fast enough. With no clear instructions given to them in the commotion, Phoenix is able to make distance between her and the gate. She has her eyes half closed now as she runs, her heart feeling like it wants to beat its way out of her chest, her mind telling her that a volley of arrows could shred her to pieces at any moment. But by the time the guards have opened fire on Phoenix, she's at the edge of the forest, blanketed by the leaves of a hundred trees, casting her in shadow, the shouts of the guards now a mere muffle in the wind. Phoenix is terrified and incredibly lucky to be alive, but she is alive. And she feels more alive than she can remember. That's the end of that chapter. So, I hope you like that. I hope I didn't talk too fast. And I hope there hasn't been technical problems. Because I'm not seeing any updates on the chat here. Um, okay, yeah, you, you're all being kind and polite. I was thinking, oh my god, has this crashed and I've got to do all this again? <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it, guys. That was... Uh, Weird to read out when you've got an audience that you can't hear, but you can see, and, and no one's talking. So I, I'm glad, because that meant you were engaged, right? Or just being polite, or both. Um, dandy chap, hard Dom, not mentioned it before, but excited to see your progress leading up to release of this book. Very happy for you, all the best to you and your family. Thank you, uh, Tyrion, I really appreciate that, mate. Tyrion is a, a very, very good a high elo League of Legends player, so I appreciate for you, you, you coming on the stream. Uh, I'm glad you like that, guys. Lucy saying we were being polite. Yep. Um, you should get yourself on Audible, mate. Rob, I'm not sure I've got a monotone voice, haven't I? I, I don't. This is why I stick to writing. I, I can interview people on stream for my esports work, but um, yeah, I, I maybe I need to get more confidence with it. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, Ad Erskine said, "Well, we're really uh, into it. Really good, Dom. I'm booked. Uh, really good. Dom's right. Rob's right. Even good when read aloud." Looking forward to reading the full book. Well, it's out now, guys. I've put it live. Um, I'm really pleased. I, I, I had help. I used a service, actually, to because the formatting became a bit of a pain in the, the backside. I, I formatted the book myself, um, which I'm, I'm pleased with. Again, Spatch, thanks for your help with that. But to do an e-book, there's certain things you need to do. You need to add a contents page, and um, it's a bit it needs to be a bit more professional. So the e-book is out now on smashwords.com you can see the link um, it comes up in the chat every now and then if you scroll up and if you go on my website dominicsacco.com click on the fantasy novel link uh, at the top right and then uh, you can download it there you can download it for kindle download it on your phone tablet whatever and then you can like change the fonts and, and things like that so ebook is really good but i've got these for people who've tuned in late if you type in exclamation mark red into the chat uh, you'll be entered into a, a, a draw for one of these to win one of these. Um, these are limited edition because uh, I can't sell them for money. Um, so I've bought these out of my own pocket, but I want to give five away. So exclamation mark red in the chat if you want to enter the competition if you haven't done already. And I'll send those copies out uh, to the winners over the next week or so. So how are we doing for time? Oh God, it's five to ten. Right, I'll try and whittle through uh, the last few bits book reviews I'm going to read some reviews now really quickly <clears throat> because there's one thing me waffling on about the book but having other people's opinion will help you uh, as well and the way it is 35 on Twitter who's a World of Warcraft fan we've been following each other on Twitter for a while now and they offered to read my book early and showed a lot of interest in my book uh, when no one else really knew about it, so I really appreciate that. They said, Turning Red is a fantastic adventure with many surprises. It kept me wondering what was going to happen next. I found Phoenix Dreamfoil, and that is her name at the start of the book, to be a very relatable character, and I would love to see more of her. Um, Tally said, Engrossing, mate, can you read me the next chapter tomorrow if I call you in bed? Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it. Oh, David XL lost. That's a shame. Oh, sorry to hear that. Um, and then this uh, review from James Batchelor, who I'm going to thank again, James, because he proofed the whole book, gave a lot of advice, grammar, um, you know, a second perspective, real experience from someone who's who's written several books. Go check out James's website. It's, I think it's jamesbatchelor.me because he wrote a great urban fantasy novella earlier this year called Wandless, um, which is about a um, 
uh, a sort of witch. It's modern day, and they have sort of like witch internment camps and things like that. They're all kept under control. It's about this witch who escapes. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, so James has said, Turning Red offers more depth than your typical fanfic. Phoenix is a compelling protag- protagonist whose seemingly uncontrollable anger issues ramp up the tension throughout the book and her transformation over the course of her adventure makes her more and more likeable as the story goes on. There's an engaging cast of characters around her who show off strong and lovable personalities within just a few lines of dialogue. Perhaps the best aspect of this story is how character-driven the plot is. Rather than spinning an epic story of world-saving heroes, prophecies and chosen ones, this has a smaller scope but higher personal stakes. It's also very accessible for anyone who hasn't played World of Warcraft and is unfamiliar with the specifics of the lore and the locations. It's a long read but well-paced and leaves you wanting more. Worth a try for any fantasy fan. So thanks a lot to James and the way it is for that. It is quite long. It's, I mean, this book is 500 words, but... Um, I've, the font size is a bit big. I mucked up a little bit there. This is size 11 font. You would have thought this would be like a lot smaller than that. I think for my next book, I'll go for like size 9 font or something. So although it sounds a lot at 500 pages, you could probably get through it quite quickly. It's probably like two to 300 pages if it was much smaller uh, font. Um, so that's the that's the book reading, guys, and that's the, the reviews. I'm going to do a Q&A now. So if you want to ask me anything... Anything at all. Uh, I mean, it makes sense to ask about the the books, but you can ask me anything, uh, and I'm happy to to answer. I've spoken about why uh, I wrote the book. You know, it was my World of Warcraft character, and I will say now that <clears throat> for anyone that doesn't know, I've got three children: a three-year-old toddler and two six-month-old twins uh, that have made life difficult but lovely at the same time. But it means I have less free time to do stuff. Now the twins have got to six months old, getting into more of a routine. I have evenings like this uh, a little bit more now. And so I would like to play World of Warcraft again and play uh, role play. And there's a great guild I found on the Argent Dawn uh, server in EU. So shout out to the family um, because they made me feel very welcome with a few sort of open events they did. So it may be that I get back into role playing and, and actually play my character as she is uh, in more sort of like modern day in the game kind of thing so ah that's annoying Spatch's website isn't working that should that was working the other day because I tried it the other day that must have literally just mucked up Um, but I'll put links out another time you can follow him Lucy thanks for asking the first question you've asked uh, what was your favourite part about writing the book i.e. characters plot being set within a world you already knew and loved that's a really good question um I think the favourite part, my favourite part of the book, that's that's really, that's really tough. I think, um, well, my least favourite part was when I got halfway through and I was I was struggling. I had a bit of a writer's block. I think finishing it, honestly, I think finishing it because I had in my mind a loose idea of a uh, the the structure, you know, the narration, the order, the chapters. I had a loose idea, but my writing style, as I write a chapter, I'm very much. Um, in, in, I get in the zone and I tend to go off on tangents and then I dig myself into holes and then I'm 10 chapters in I'm like how the hell am I going to tie this all up I've got loads of loose ends now um, so that was a challenge so what I loved I had the idea of what would happen at the end of the book quite early on and I think I built up to that a bit too much and I will say it is quite a long book but if you can get to the final third um, like James said to me in uh, private feedback to me um, before I published the book, <clears throat> it gets really good towards the end. Like it get, your writing gets better as well because this is the first book I've ever written. So the first ten chapters or so, yeah, you can tell it is amateurish. But as as I go on, the final third, I really loved writing that and the conclusion and the twists. And I put some twists in there that Spatch didn't guess, which I'm really happy with because these days, if I watch a film or read a book or a TV show, I'm very good at guessing twists. I say to my wife, "He's the villain. That's going to happen." And, you know, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but seven, eight times out of ten, it happens. I'm like, there you go. So I've got a mind for a writer and for creative stories and things like that. Um, I don't want to miss some of these questions. Uh, Let me just scroll back up here. Uh, Right, so that's Lucy's uh, question. One second. And if I've missed any before that, please ask them again. Uh, One second. All right, okay. 
you getting any classic in with three children? Rob, not anymore, no. I miss WoW Classic. Um, oh gosh, I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with the questions here. One second, because I've only got limited space on my stream, so I'm having to use my laptop to scroll back up. Uh, Becca has said, how did you find writing such a different style and genre to your usual journalistic work? I enjoyed it a lot, Becca, because it was a break for me from writing news stories and interviews and info you know sort of um you're informing people more aren't you whereas creative writing you're entertaining them a bit more uh, for me it was a lovely release from that and originally i wrote it anonymously i was going to keep this whole character and everything as the thing i do in my spare time and complete it com keep it completely separate from my personal life and my work life but as time gone on i realized i want to publish the book i want to get my name out there and just have fun with it um so it was different and I've learnt a lot. You know, I, I James uh, Spatch noticed this as well when he proofed the book. He was like, you're using techniques here, Dom, that are used in journalism because he's a journalist as well. The games industry drop is. We worked together for a few years. That doesn't work always in creative writing. So I had to relearn some parts of writing. I was never happy with my own creative writing. It wasn't until... Um, uh, when was it now that I started playing World of Warcraft and started role playing because when you play World of Warcraft you pr you type forward slash me did this and the other and then what that does is it makes your character say Phoenix places the glass on the table right and I did that so much over a few years I was like this is like a book really it's like an interactive book and that's what gave me the confidence so shout out to the guild I was in uh, at the time Valfawn and the Rookery it really gave me a lot of confidence um, to, to grow this character and I'll, I'll, I'll never sort of forget that. I'll always appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, right, let's just scroll back up here. Uh, one second. Uh, Infected Crucifix. Uh, they asked, what made you start writing fiction? That was it, what I just said there. Yeah, it, it was World of Warcraft. It was because I was role-playing and making my character do things. I was lucky enough to be in a guild of like very, very cool and creative people that had likewise like very cool characters and they uh embraced like welcomed me with open arms and encouraged my character to really like come out and um it was through that encouragement that i got into it it was through world of warcraft really that i got into creative writing so it's mad to think we were in that guild all those years ago doing molten core and things like that and uh, back then, I would have laughed at role-playing in World of Warcraft. Oh, what? That's a geek thing to do. What the hell is all that? Whereas now, it breathed new life into the game for me. It's actually, role-playing is the way I like to play World of Warcraft now. I think it's uh, it's really good. And if you guys haven't done it, I really you know, encourage you to give it a go. Um, thanks for that question, of course. Okay, what else do we have here? How many puns can we expect to find in this? <laughs> It's a good question. I don't know, you know. I don't think I put puns in there. Unless, you'll see later on, there's some cool characters and things that I introduced that have a good sense of humour. So there may be a couple of puns in there. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Uh, I was going to say something else. I can't think of it now. But there, there's not tons of, of puns in there. Uh, but yeah, you'd expect there to be lots. Maybe I should write a joke book in the future or, or a, a silly book. Uh, okay, who else have we got here? Um, Spatch has asked, any other games you would want to write fan fiction for? That's a good question, Spatch. Um, I thought about League of Legends and uh, Riot UK, the developer of League of Legends, they did a competition, a writing competition a while back, uh, which was like, you know, write 1,200 words a very very short story set in the world of there were some new in-game character skins they released uh, write some new uh, write some fiction and I thought about it I just didn't have the time I saw it too late and the deadline was in two or three days I didn't have time possibly League of Legends but it's not quite League of Legends if they make it into an MMO and you can actually walk around the world and get the atmosphere in fair enough but at the moment League of Legends is just 5v5 you know on a map it's hard to get that lore in. I have read up on some of the lore of League of Legends, and there's a book I'd like to get to read more about it, but maybe League of Legends. Um, I did think of one the other day, actually. I can't remember what it was now. I don't know. It wasn't Zelda or Final Fantasy. It was something else. Horizon I've been playing on the PS4. Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that's quite a cool world, but for now I'll probably stick to 
to Warcraft, if I'm being honest, uh, uh, Spatch, and maybe do a sequel to this book. I've got some ideas for that as well. Um, yeah, Lucy said it does feel good right in the end, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very rewarding feeling. Uh, Craig van der Super, who's a, a great helper, writer for my site, Esports News UK. I appreciate your help over the years, Craig has said. What beginner tips... Uh, oh God, I wish I could stop the Twitch chat from scrolling. What beginner tips do you have for people like me who want to start writing novels? Just write, mate. Just write. It's, do it. Muck about. Do it in your spare time. I tried writing creative writing like my own novel I remember when I was about 14 or 15 I wrote a page and I thought it was good as I was writing it and as I read it back I was disgusted I hated it I threw it away and I was like I can't be a writer I'm, I'm not doing that of course when you're a teenager you don't realize uh, how naive you are back then I mean that's ridic ridiculous isn't it for me to give up after writing one page of fiction I've, at 15 years old it's just stupid isn't it so just write it's like esports just do it have fun with it Craig you've you've studied um uh, was it history and uh, I think at uni, but you have a lot of writing skills. You've got writing skills from doing the esports stuff as well. So just go for it. Just get some ideas down. And I'd be out and about, you know, I'd be out shopping or something and an idea would pop into my head. So I'd jump onto Google Docs on my phone and I'd just write it down. My note document for this book is an absolute mess. It's about 60 pages long, character arcs all over the place. It's a horrible uh, when I get to my next book, I'm looking forward to deleting that because <laughs> it's horrible. So have notes, have a Google Doc, and you can just add to it. Any ideas that come into your head, just throw them down, you know. Okay, let's uh, let's go uh, on to the next question. Um, let's have a look here. British Esports, can't believe I'm late. Morgan or Elliot, whoever that is, that's okay. Don't worry. Thank you for tuning in. We're doing the Q&A now. You missed the book reading, but that's okay. Um uh, Infected Crucifix says yes twists yes there's several twists uh, Adam Erskine has asked do you need World of Warcraft knowledge background to understand the story and the world no no you don't um, Adam and you'll have seen if you were listening to the review that Spatch wrote earlier he said something like I may have read it quite fast that you don't need understanding the world there's a few bits in there you might have thought what the hell is that the Sunwell she's trying to tap into the Sunwell you'll see that's explained in the first few chapters the Sunwell is like a font of magical energy that a lot of the, the high elves get their power from and their strength and their um, vigor and all that stuff so you might have been confused by that but I explain it all quite easily I had um, Bodgy uh, one of my good friends messaged me the other day, said, uh, Dom, I'm about a quarter way through the book, enjoying it. Um, it's really easy to read and follow. So that was a compliment to me. And for him to get through a quarter of the book, it's pleased me a lot because I thought the book's quite slow to start and it gets better towards the end. Um, so, yeah, hope that helps. Uh, who else have we got here? Okay, so there's a few of you chatting amongst yourself. Greg, hello, Greg. How are you doing? Meg, <laughs> how are you doing, Greg? Greg of death. Uh, how many people's homes do you think you will need to almost burn down to write the sequel? <laughs> yeah, oh, gosh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, man. And it's, it's funny you should say that as well because um, uh, I did want to use some real songs for the start of this stream. Um and I wanted to use Firestarter by Prodigy. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Phoenix does grow to be a bit of a hothead. So uh, yeah, there's a teaser for you there. Um, so that was that was Gregor Death there. Let's see the next question. There's the the uh, the Twitch chat is still moving fast, which is really good. Uh, Elliot, thank you, Elliot, for tuning in. Skyrim would be a good one. Yeah, it, it actually, that's a really good shout. I think dragons and things like that. That's I, I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, and uh, actually, do you know what, uh, Elliot? You've reminded me something there. There's something else that inspired me, probably subconsciously, was Skyrim. Because there's a group in that, the Dark Brotherhood, which if, if, you've played, if you haven't played Skyrim or if you have played Skyrim and you've never done the Dark Brotherhood questline, go and do the Dark Brotherhood questline. It's one of the best gaming storylines for me and actually I've got a lot of inspiration for Phoenix probably from Astrid anyone who's played Skyrim and done Dark Brotherhood Astrid is like a leader of a, a sort of hidden group of assassins and uh, that inspired me 
a lot. I think I have a little, wait one there, one second guys, I'm just going to be geeky. I have a little figure of Astrid from uh, Skyrim. Look, there she is there. Oh my God. <sighs> have I copied? Have I copied subconsciously? I mean, maybe. She's in red and black garb, isn't she? Phoenix isn't as angry as Astrid. They're, they're very different uh, people. But yeah, I mean, that's a general rogue look in, anyway, isn't it? Red and black and things like that. Let's put that on there. Um, okay, let's scroll up. Uh, okay. Yeah, Horizon is amazing. And guys, Horizon, the new game was announced yesterday. Check out the PS5 stream announcement. The new Horizon game looks really, really good. Uh, I can't wait to play that. Uh, uh, David Geek Mandem has said, I'd like you to write a Timo fanfic. Timo, for those who don't know, is one of the annoying little gits of a character in League of Legends. Uh, oh dear, you'd have to pay me to, to write that, David. I'll tell you, if you, I'll, I'll send you a, a quote, yeah, and then you want me to write me, I can write you a Timo book, no problem, but uh, I have a high fee for that, I think. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Lucy has asked it's easy to, uh, to become disheartened and to criticise yourself remember we've all got to start somewhere and find people to share your writing with uh, I can't keep up with this bloody chat uh, one second Share your writing with and give feedback. Yep, absolutely. Um, infected crucifix need to go. No problem. Sorry if I missed your uh, your comment. We've got a gap at 5am. Thank you. And I appreciate that because you've got kids and everything. I Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you like the book if you choose to read it. Um, Elliot, you won't be buying a copy because it's free. This is free fan fiction. So go, uh, go check it out. It's on dominicsacco.com now. And on Smashwords, you can get the ebook. So if you've got a Kindle or any device, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm still struggling with this chat. Bear with me, guys. Spatch has said your first book is always shit. Your second, still shit, but uh, less. Hang on, where is it? Uh, okay, he's he's talking to Lucy there. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm hoping I haven't missed any questions here because I'm just keeping up with the chat here, guys. Uh, One second. Right, I think I'm catching up here now. The Sacco Snacko emote. I've got a Twitch emote you'll see there. Elliot's put that. That's with my work at British Esports. Elliot's one of my colleagues at British Esports. Thank you for tuning in, Elliot. Um, right, I'm catching up now on the chat. Sally, you need to hit, hit the bed. No problem. Thank you. It's, I know it's late. I'm going to tie this stream up in a minute. So thanks very much, Sally. Um, Don, where can I buy a physical copy? I can't really sell them. Uh, Elliot, because uh, it's fan fiction, if I would sell it for money, Blizzard would uh, get in hot water because I don't own the, the Warcraft franchise, so I can't sell it for money. It has to be completely non commercial. So please download the ebook. I have some copies. Enter the competition if you haven't done already. Exclamation mark red. Type that in the chat and you'll be added into the raffle. I'm going to choose the winners in a second, guys. I'm just doing the last few questions. So if you hit last few questions, guys, and uh, I'm going to cut it off in a couple of minutes because I know people have got to go to bed and things like that. So uh, um, Arnie JDG has said, Hi, Dom. Joe Griffin here. Congrats on the book. Can't wait to have a read. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for tuning in. Joe's done some great works for Esports News UK. Thank you, uh, Joe, for tuning in. Um, Lucy, with writing, do you tend to plan out the plot or are you more of a panster? I don't know what panster is. Yeah, I plan out the plot loosely and then I go off on tangents, like I said earlier, and then I desperately try and tie things together. But yeah, I've, I've put a lot of subplots in. I'm quite pleased with how I did for my first book, definitely. Um, okay. 
Spatch, why write this as fanfic and not adapt it to be original fantasy so you can sell it? I thought about that, Spatch, and there's a couple of reasons why I chose not to do it. One, I really like my character. I wanted to do her backstory. Her backstory doesn't work properly if you take it out of Azeroth, you take it away from the Sunwell. And I didn't want to rip off those things, you know. I didn't want to call something Kel Dalas instead of Kel for last or call the Sunwell something else. People piece it together and go, this is just a Warcraft ripoff. So I really wanted to do it. And also, because it's Warcraft, <clears throat> by putting it on fanfic sites, people are going to search for the World of Warcraft category, and I'm hopefully getting get some eyeballs there, you know, and get people to know who I am, because I've written about a big popular franchise, you know. So those were the, those were the main reasons, Spatch, but I'd love to do an original uh, book next time. Um, Tom Stratford, thank you, Tom, for tuning in. He, Tom is the guy that animated the, the trailer earlier. Made it in time for the book reading. How long ago did you start writing this book? Two years ago, Tom. Where are we now? June the 12th. It's two years ago on holiday. I started writing it in Guernsey. I wrote 10,000 words here, 10,000 words there. And then over time, it's taken me, just because of the kids and the busy life, my job and the, the news website I run in my spare time, it's taken a while. Um, so, yeah, right. I'll end the questions there then, guys. Uh, thank you so much. For the questions, I'm going to do pick a winner now. So if you, I'm going to pick the five winners. So if you haven't entered to get a, a signed copy of this book, um, please type in exclamation mark red into the chat. Yes, it was Guernsey Rob when I was on holiday. That's it. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, we're going to pick the winners and we'll end the stream, guys. So we're not long to go now. So I hope this works. I hope this works. We've had 19 people enter the competition and we've got 27 in the chat. So if you don't want a copy of the book, that's fine, but I'm happy to send anywhere around the world and so on. So if you haven't entered the competition, last chance now, type exclamation mark red into the chat and final, final call, exclamation mark red. I think you've all entered, haven't you? Um, yeah, hit exclamation mark red to enter. I won't do it. I'll do it with a space so you can actually see um, what it's like, like that, okay? No, it's not forward slash roll. Nice one. Uh, oh, God, I've received a ticket. Well, if I draw my own name out, obviously, uh, I just uh, pick another winner. Right, okay, so I've 20, 19 people enter here. So, uh, closing entries now. Three, two, one. Okay. So I'm going to pick a winner, the first winner. You won't believe this. It's Sako Potato. What the hell am I doing? What the hell am I... Well done, Dom. Well done. You want a copy of your own book. Well done. Thank you, Dom. Cheers. Right. Let's do this properly, shall we? Let's pick another winner. Let's pick another winner. Bloody rigged thing. Right. Too much apple pie. Too much apple pie is the first winner. I hope you're still in the chat because I don't know your real name. And if you don't want to say your real name, please message me and your address so I can get this out. Uh, should I? I should probably write this down, shouldn't I? These winners. Can't, just let me get my horribly messy work notepad. Look at that mess. Horrible mess. Right. Too much apple pie. I mean, it will probably be saved on Streamlabs, but just in case tech malfunctions, I'm going to write the winner names down. Um, the Burton Bradstock Massive. Hurrah. Okay, well, DM me, DM me, uh, your, your, uh, after this, just DM me, and uh, make sure we, uh, I get your address and everything, and I can post it out to you. Thank you for entering. Right, the next winner, the next one is, oh, it's Jill and John. Thank you. Gillian Jonathan, uh, it's my aunt and uncle on Hazel's side. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate that. I'm gonna. I would have posted you one anyway because you're family. But I'll, I'll I'll sign it. Let me know how you want it named, uh, Gillian Jonathan. I've got a sharpie. I can do Hazel. My wife made me do this. I can do a sharpie on there, or I can do a red pen on there. You let me know. I'll sort that out afterwards. Anyway, okay. Next winner is going to be. Elliot, my colleague Elliot. Again, I probably would have sent one round to work, but I'm going to 
post this to you, Elliot. So congrats for tuning in. People are going to think this is rigged, aren't they? Colleagues and me winning. God, dear. So congrats, Elliot. Okay, now, next winner. This is number three. Fanda Suba, Craig. Well done, Craig. I'm going to get this in the post to you. Let me know if you want any messages. Otherwise, I'll do a stock silly or normal Sacco message. Uh, all the mods winning. I don't know what the hell is going on. I hope it's not doing that on purpose. I, I don't know. Oh, no, it's it's not just all the mods because too much apple pie isn't a mod, David. So just stop trying to incite uh, anger in the stream. I'm joking. Um, is this cheating? Yes, possibly. Yes, Elliot, you've got a physical copy. Nice one. I mean, I might get more made. They, they cost me about £10 each to make, but you have to get them in bulk. So it can be quite expensive. And I don't want to uh, risk incurring the wrath of Activision Blizzard by seeing that I've sold any to anyone. So I may buy more in the future. So two more winners to go, uh, guys. Uh, yeah, I've removed myself as a winner due to inactivity. No, Elliot, don't worry, honestly. I, it's all sorted. I've all, it's all good, mate. Thank you uh, for offering that, though. Right, so next two winners. Next one is... Lucy. Lucy, a fellow author. Thank you uh, for tuning in, Lucy. I really appreciate it. And I hope the stream has given you some uh, inspiration or ideas for when you do you're at a much more professional level to me but i like these streams you know and i think you're a pop if you're a popular successful author these streams would, would be very popular you know i'm sure people want to tune into a stream if george R. R. martin or or whoever um did a stream uh you know you're going to get tons and tons of viewers aren't you so i'm delighted i've had around 30 on this stream today so thank you okay so the last winner Guys, the last one, I'm going to draw it here. Greg Rowe, my former housemate. I say former housemate. We didn't live together, but we might as well have done. I came around your house so much. Congrats, Greg. And I hope Nat will enjoy this as well, if she decides to read it. Because I know, from what I remember, Nat likes reading books and things. I may be wrong. But congrats, Greg. Woo. Um that's great so that's the five i've picked guys but honestly i'm gonna have after this like i've given one to my parents i've got one indoors i'll probably give a couple out to family there's these five that have gone out so there's probably like eight or nine left so just message me if you really want a copy i want to get them out to people if i can um but the, the giveaway was a fun thing for for people to um you know tune into the stream and get something uh, posted out to them no problems at all so that's the cute that's the the jaw done guys and that's everything if you, if you want if you had more questions to ask please ask away i think an hour and a half we've been on here i think that's a good enough time isn't it rob wants one yeah rob do you know what i do have a list somewhere of um people that uh it's on my notes google doc uh, i have a, a list of people that have expressed interest from a while back one in the book so i'm going to really do my best to make sure i get enough to send out um nat's listening also thanks nat for tuning in um and spatch I, i'm going to send you one spatch anyway because you you proofread uh you helped so much with this book and uh, i've got a copy of your book so i'll send this out just so you can put it somewhere um mr ruskin adam said thanks for the stream don really enjoyed it and hearing you read well done Erkin86, how do I go about getting one? Where do I send the check? No, no, please don't pay me anything because uh, then I'll get into naughty, get into trouble potentially with the owners of World of Warcraft. So I, I'll just add your name to a list, um, Beth, and uh, just see what I can do. Because it might be after these 20 go, I might just order another batch of 10 or 20 anyway and just send them out. But the main way to get it is the ebook. Okay, so uh, these will be limited, but the ebook is really good because you can change like the font settings and all that. Um, cool. Okay, Rob's gonna hit up Zolgarab. Good luck in game, mate. Good luck. Um, Elliot's gonna watch the vod. Yeah, uh, <laughs> enjoy, uh, Elliot. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for tuning in. You don't have to do that, and you work bloody hard on the team and Morgan. I really appreciate that, and all the team do. Um, Becca said it's been great. Thank you, Becca. Once this lockdown's over, let's meet up. And everyone in this stream, you've all mainly friends and family. Let's meet up because I've missed a lot of you so much. Um, 
the way it is, is please add me to the list. Yeah, you, you read an early copy, uh, the way it is. So I really, I really appreciate your help, helping me make the book uh, better and improving it and everything like that. So I will do my best to get you a copy. Uh, thanks everyone for behaving. Now, I didn't need to get mods in the chat because you've all been amazing. And um, Turpin, well done, Don. Really enjoyed listening to it. I'm glad. I'm, I, I, know, look, I know your friends and fab, uh, family, so I've created a bit of a bubble here. I did want to open it up to as many people as possible. So you all, I know you're going to be nice to me anyway, but it does mean a lot, uh, Turp, so I appreciate that. Uh, fun stream. Thank you for the invite. We miss you too, Dom. Yeah, it's, it's sad, isn't it? Well, the lockdown's lifting a bit. Once I think with Hazel, because she has asthma, she's a bit worried about it, and because we have kids, I think... Once there's a vaccine, I'll probably be going out and about. But for but for now, it's little things like you know dropping shopping off at my parents and and all that stuff. So, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I don't think there's any more questions from anyone. It's been a good hour and a half stream. I'm going to sign off in a minute, and I'm going to leave it to the outro. So thanks again uh, for watching this. Go check out DominicSacco.com. There's a newsletter on there if you want to hear about more of my books. Because I've got a sci-fi idea that I've had. I've actually had this idea for about nine, ten years. I wrote it down on a notepad before I had the confidence to um, to write fiction like this. And I loved the idea, but I didn't have the confidence. Now I've got the confidence. It came to me in a dream. I know it sounds really weird. It came to me in a dream. And I thought, that's a pretty good idea for a book. It's sort of like a sci-fi thing. So maybe if I want to get the time over the next few years, I'd like to write a sequel to this and uh, explore this sci-fi idea a bit more. So thanks, guys, for every, for tuning in. Uh, love to you all. Stay safe. Hope you're all well. And look after yourselves. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, Sacco signing out.